So how do you create a top tier website with Cursor in just a few simple steps? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a few tools and tips that allows to take components uh, from my directory, remix those into your own and easily create a top tier website, which is on par with the rest of the market. My name is Liam van Vliet. I am a data engineer and on this channel, I create videos about coding with AI and also implement AI within medium sized businesses and realize real business value and also measure that business value created by AI. And let's start by looking at the outline of this video. So how do we start? We start at the cursor directory, which is where we will find our rules or cursor rules. Cursor rules are important because this is the starting point for our project. Our project is going to need cursor rules, which are basically guidelines for the cursor IDE for the agent that will code for us to follow. This will basically minimize the error made by the agent and also level up our code quality. Well, within the cursor directory, as you can see, there is also something called MCP servers. This is uh, something I will create an, another video on uh, soon. Uh, you will also see this somewhere within this video sometimes pop up when I create certain components. Uh, for now, all you need to know is that this is a protocol created by Claude as a way for databases or services to connect with your uh, AI chat uh, slash model. In this case, Cursor made it possible to also connect it with their IDE. When we go into cursor directory, we will find a big list of certain rules specific for certain frameworks. We're gonna look and filter on the most popular and take the first one uh, made by Mohammed and basically copy this over into our cursor IDE. So here we are in our cursor IDE. Let's open the settings. Here within the cursor settings, we find the general rules for AI, which is uh, not important right now. These are basically the general rules which apply to every coding project within your cursor IDE. So we want to go down the page to project rules, which is where we're going to click on add new rule. And we're going to give it a good description, a good name uh, by which the IDE can recognize where these rules are about. And we will do the same in the description once we have created these rules. So in this case, let's call it personal website. And here you got basically two fields you have to fill in. So first one is a description for your rules by which the IDE can easily or uh, understand where the rules are about. And we are going to also fill in the globs, which is basically for the IDE to recognize uh, which uh, files these uh, rules usually apply to. So let's copy these rules. Let's go back to our IDE and paste them in. And then for our description and globe, let's use OpenAI or some other model to generate these for us. We can do this within cursor, of course. Have it think and write this out for us. Here you see we already get some nice results. So let's copy over the description. And also let's copy over the globes slash or files. Everything seems to be all right. And now we are done with our project rules. Part of our first step is also wireframing. To make it, make it ourselves easy, we go to a website called Realm. This is basically a paid service for uh, website designers. Um, in this case, we are going to use the free trial, which gives us a free a few options which are good enough in my opinion for the basic rough sketch that we want to do and use as an outline uh, for a website and in this case i created actually a sitemap so these are basically the pages and what is in these pages um, for me to know what i was going to build or what i am going to build and i can also use this basically create a screenshot of these uh, pages uh, and put this into Claude and even have it create uh, a folder structure, also even pages already based on the sitemap. Also an option uh, called wireframe within Realm. This is, they basically offer a one free page 
it is quite nice where you can actually take uh, building blocks, take components, take sections pre-made and easily um, basically uh, click up uh, a quick wireframe for you to use. Starting off with step two, which is about tools and frameworks, we are going to use Next.js. So Next.js is a React framework, uh, which we are going to use because there are many components and also resources to be found on the web, easily uh, used to create a top tier website. On the Next.js website itself, you can find uh, a lot on how the framework works, but also uh, certain uh, components and templates even which you can uh, uh, scroll through, uh, take screenshots of, or even take the code uh, uh, snippets from the website and implement them in your project. So this allows us really to take uh, ready-made pieces of code and uh, quickly implement them into our own website, um, remix those uh, and create our own. But there's also something called a, a website called 21st Dev, which is a, a great, great repository of uh, code components and pieces, which are usually made on Next.js as well. Uh, they might use certain things like Tailwind CSS. Um, there are a lot of cool uh, components and effects to be found there. Uh, you can uh, scroll through them. It's a big repository. And uh, uh, the best thing about this, they also supply the coding or the, the prompt that you can use within Cursor to actually have Cursor create this component in your own website. Another tool that we are going to use is ChatCN. It is basically something that you can use to load in components. It's, it's a component library and through ChatCN you can load in into your project uh, uh, certain React components and add those to your project. So you can easily load in like a radio button, like a slider, uh, something along those lines. Um, in this case, uh, we are just going to use ShedCN because uh, when we ask, for example, Cursor to create uh, with the help of ShedCN uh, a agenda picker or something like a slider, then it can easily understand what you mean, what the design is going to be uh, and basically use one of the components on the website that you see to create that component and put that into your own project, into your own website. Moving on to step three, um, there are a few ways that we can go about this. So uh, we can clone either a template from another website. There are a lot of uh, templates on the web that offer uh, basically boilerplate code uh, templates that you can easily fill in or change to your own liking. In this case, uh, on 21st Dev, there are also certain templates listed. Uh, there are free ones out there. Uh, most of them are paid. For this project, I've actually created a GitHub repository, uh, which serves as a website template, which has everything you need, everything that I just talked about, all the uh, basic setup code for the frameworks that we want to use. Um, uh, which you only have to basically clone into your own IDE. So uh, copy this link and then in your terminal, uh, write git clone, paste that link in, and this will uh, copy over the repository. And uh, when you run this on localhost, this will basically launch a very basic website, which is ready uh, and working on Next.js. So moving over to our IDE, here we basically put in the uh, git command, clone the repository. Then now we are connected to this cloned repository, uh, which is very important because uh, for checkpoints, we also have to save within this repository. Uh, and before we can actually run the website, uh, we have to install all the dependencies, all the packages that we are going to use in this project. So whenever you don't understand uh, what you have to do, just copy it in, use the composer agent mode, that's very important, and basically have the agent uh, tell us what to do and do it for us. So once we are done, we can run uh, npm run dev, which will launch the website on localhost. Uh, these might miss some images, uh, but that's not a problem in this case. We just want to be able to run the basic website. 
Moving over to step four, we are on 21st def. Here we are going to look for a uh, first component. In this case, we are looking for a navigation menu. So this is basically a preview where you can see how this uh, navigation should work. So let's go to cursor and here we paste in the chat our prompt. Ask it to uh, add this navigation to the page. Uh, so it will use this prompt to create the code. So let's run this and let's do its thing. So this is currently uh, running, almost done. We can see that uh, within our terminal, uh, it is compiling again, the code is changing. Uh, yes, we can see all the code it created. So let's move, move over to our website. And here we can see the navigation that we just saw on 21st dev added to our website. Now this is of course not tailor-made to what we want or what uh, you would perhaps prefer, but uh, that's of course not the point. Uh, we first want to implement these components and then later on remix them, edit them, uh, change it to our own liking, to our own website, uh, our own team. But this really shows how you can easily uh, create websites with high quality code um, even though components might differ from each other, uh, with Cursor you can easily create something that uh, creates a, a very well structured, uh, complete uh, looking website which uh, is uh, aligning on every page with the right font, the right font size, etc. What we can also do is basically, in this case, copy the sitemap that we want with all the pages and have cursor already create for us these pages uh, to work with. So we paste in the sitemap overview. So cursor is now going to run. It's going to create uh, a couple of folders, each for the page that we had in our sitemap. So it's going to create a services, it's also going to create an about page. Um, and then with these pages, we can then later on also put in our components and basically uh, uh, edit them and uh, slowly build out this top tier website that we have in mind. Something that I already mentioned is that we can basically also take templates uh, as inspiration, take screenshots from certain pieces or components of that page and copy that over to Cursor to let Cursor recreate uh, those elements or those pages. So uh, in this case, we're gonna create, uh, or say for example, for the homepage, create space between the text and the navigation uh, bar, and uh, basically add this section that we just took a screenshot of. So let's paste in the image that we have. and it's taking its time to generate the page. And we see it is done, so we accept all the files. And let's go over to our local host and see what we have created. So here we are on our local host website, and as we can see, it um, basically recreated uh, the pieces of the page that we just took a screenshot of. Uh, the company logos are not exactly the same, <laughs> but uh, we can always put these in later. Uh, the, the general structure of the website, uh, we did copy. Let's spice this up even further and search for a cool hero component that we can implement on our website. That's maybe too much. Scroll animation, backgrounds, path. So let's copy this prompt and let's put this into our IDE. So let's implement this on the hero page. And Curse is going to do its thing here. We accept all the code and all the changes. And let's see what we have right now. It basically still took our text. Hi, I'm Dylan from the last uh, page that we uh, uh, took some elements from. Uh, but we see we have this really nice looking background right now. 
I also want to quickly show you guys how you can use ShedCN. So here we are at the uh, homepage where we find all the components and blocks. So add from ShedCN project cards to the homepage after about. So this is going to create a couple of project cards. This will create these uh, neat looking project cards. Then what we can do next is we can even turn these project cards into a slider based on the slider that Shetsian Components Library also has. Step number five. This is a very important step. This is basically uh, something that is good to know within the cursor, IDE. Uh, you can scroll up to certain moments in your chat, which is basically as it sounds, a point in time where you can revert your code back to. So whenever cursor makes changes or later on you actually discover uh, cursor made some errors, you can revert back to that point in time before uh, those changes made by cursor. Uh, so always for, do not forget to save your code, uh, push it to GitHub, uh, but also to revert back whenever you can. To upload our website, we want to go over to our hosting domain. Uh, there, within your domain manager, you want to go over to your files and uh, have HTTP docs uh, folder be filled with the static website content that you generate within your cursor IDE. So here you want to upload certain files within HTTP docs to uh, launch your static website. Next, we go back to cursor. Here we're going to ask the agent to generate a static website for us to generate the files that we need to upload within the HTTP docs folder. So I want to bring my website live as a static website and upload the files to the HTTP docs. Uh, this is for cursor to understand uh, what you exactly are, want to do with your Next.js website. Always important, as you see right now in this chat, is to run npm run build, because whenever changes have been done, but you haven't run npm run build, then it might be that the files that you upload to the HTTP docs do not contain those changes that you made. So as you can see, it is going to create an out folder. And within this out folder are the pages that we want to upload, all the files that we want to upload. And now we are done generating the static web pages, the static files, and we are going to upload these within our domain. So we want to go back to our provider. We want to go back to our files for our domain, HTTP docs. And this is where we want to basically upload the, all the files of the out folder that was created by cursor. That concludes it for this video. I hope that you liked it. Please subscribe and give this video a like if you did. Uh, any more videos to come in the coming weeks uh, about Cursor and for example MCP servers which boost the intelligence and also the capabilities of Cursor but also uh, for example a video on a agentic framework for content creation which boosts your business uh, high value content and I'll see you in the next one.